Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we believe that. We believe your word is true. God, we, we understand the, the pattern, in, even in scripture, when people come into your presence, their lives are forever changed. God, that's no different today. We thank you. We thank you for your presence. God, I thank you that, that you allow us to come into your presence. And God, where you are truly is a house of miracles. God, we do, I just speak life into situations right now in this room that, that may be, be looking dim and, and, and depressing. And, and God, we, we come with expectations of your move in our lives. And Lord, I thank you for it. God, I thank you because you cannot fail. I thank you because your word is true and your word does say that all things do work together for the good of those that, that love you. And God, we love you. And God, we thank you for that, that assurance that you give us. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you expecting God to move? I believe sometimes that we need to ask ourselves that question. We just go through the motions or do we expect God to move? And I, I for one, am coming into this place today and with a level of expectation that's, that's pretty high. You'll hear in a minute from the, from the word that the reason why there's an expectation in the room. God is, God is good and he meets us where we're at. He does. He does. Well, somebody may need an encouragement in that space, and so I'm going to ask you to be an encouraging uh, face and a smile to those that are around you. Would you, before you're seated, just turn around and, and shake hands, maybe say hi, and give an encouraging word to that person that's beside you or around you, and just allow them to see your smile and bless them this morning. Amen. If you're joining with us online, as we've said already, we welcome you. We're so glad that you've joined with us today, and we're honored that you would uh, be with us today. God's going to do some great things. He is not dependent upon location, and so our prayer is that his presence would be with you in that, that place where you're at, as well as the, that he's here in the room here today. We're excited about what God's doing here at Calvary Church, and I know that every week we have an opportunity to, to worship the Lord in his presence, and, and God does great things when we come into his, his, uh, his house, and it is a house of miracles. And one of the ways that, that we just continue to worship God is, is through what the Bible calls our, our tithes and our offerings. And you say, Pastor John, you say this every week. I say, yeah, it's still in the Bible. And so we're going we're gonna to keep reminding ourselves of this expectation that God has of us that we would just do what he says to do. And he says that, he says in one place in his word, try me in this. And he says, you know what, if we'll just allow the Lord to be a blessing through our resources that he has given us, given to us in the first place, then boy, his hand just is, is working in our lives. I'm a testimony of that, I've seen it work over and over in my life as well. So the Bible tells us that we are to return to the Lord his tithes, that first 10%, the first fruits, and we have an opportunity to give to him out of the abundance, our offerings. And we do that in several different ways. You can give that physically in the checks or in the, uh, the envelopes that are in the seat pockets there in front of you. You can drop those off in the buckets on your way back. Uh, out of the building here today. You can give online, calvarytriad.com slash give, or you can text to give, and you text the amount to 84321. We've been talking even this past week with some of the staff here about, about how, how God is faithful and how that as we just flow in that obedience to Scripture, that God shows up every time. And uh, we're excited to be just living testimonies of that. One of the ways that, that uh, you can see God working through your generosity and giving is through the different ministries here at Calvary. And we're excited to draw your attention to some of those here today. Um, our youth ministries department is, uh, they're already there, but there's about... Uh, 25 or so of them, depends on uh, how many Pastor G actually made it to Orlando with. I'm teasing, because he may have lost, no, I'm just teasing, he hasn't lost anybody yet, but uh, a big group of the, uh, the student ministries 
uh, team is on their way. They're already there in Orlando National Fine Arts Festival. What that is, is it's an opportunity for our students to, to demonstrate and further develop their ministry gifts. And boy, we've got some talented students that are this week going to be participating in that. There'll be probably close to 13, 14,000 students from all over the nation that show up and, and uh, just demonstrate their gifts uh, that God has put in their lives. So just pray for Pastor G and the team there and all the students that they would give their best, yes, but they would understand that the focus of it is not necessarily an evaluation sheet or anything like that, but that they would develop those ministry gifts in them. It's exciting to see what God's doing. This, this coming week, starting tomorrow night um, at 6.30, um, we are also celebrating kind of a next-gen focus in our announcement time here today that uh, VBS is happening starting tomorrow night uh, here at Calvary, Monday through Thursday night, 6.30 to 8.30 every night. And uh, we're excited to see what God is going to do in the lives of kiddos and their families. I just ask you to pray that God would continue to work through our kids' ministries uh, department here, that, uh, that God would use them and the leaders. And if you are ones that have volunteered Thank you. You guys are amazing. We appreciate you giving your time. If you haven't yet, there's still time to do that. Calvarytriad.com slash VBS, or you can just run over to the Kids Zone area after service today and say, hey, I want to help. And we'd uh, love for you to take part in that as well. Finally, next Sunday, we're going to have a time of celebration in this in this room uh, during our Sunday morning worship experiences. Um, one, we're gonna celebrate what God has done in the lives of kiddos at VBS. And we just are anticipating some great stories there. We'll, we'll have a little bit of highlight there. And then two, we're also, next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. Don't you love baptism time? Isn't it just kind of one of those, things? yeah. It's just an opportunity. That's why every week we, we give an opportunity for people to come and meet Jesus because being baptized in water is just that next step. It's the outward profession or the outward show of what God has done already inside in, in an individual's lives, uh, individual's life. So uh, baptism is next Sunday. Uh, if you haven't been baptized or you know someone that would like to be baptized, real easy way for you to do that on those connect cards that Pastor Scott mentioned already or on that QR code that's on the seat backs there in front of you. If you just scan that QR code, it'll pop up a little screen that says uh, uh, connect, give, or I want to be baptized and just fill that out and we'll walk you through the next steps of that. We would love to have uh, you celebrate with us your, um, your life with Jesus. And there's, there's no greater celebration than we can have with you in that. Had someone talk to me after service today, uh, the early service about, uh, I've already, I've been baptized a long time ago and this and that, different situations around that story. I just feel like I need to be baptized again. I said, great, let's do it. Let's celebrate with you. And so they're doing that as well. If that's you, we'd love to have you um, celebrate with us next week in baptism. Well, have you enjoyed the last couple weeks um, hearing from some of our pastors on staff here, the different voices? It's been a good time. Yeah. Oh, come on. That was a golf clap. You could do better than that. They, yeah, that was great. Well... Some of you, um, some of you have um, said to me, you say, all right, Pastor John, when are you back in the, in the saddle? Well, today's the day. So there you go. So some of you are like, oh man, I was hoping somebody else was going to speak. Too bad. Your expectations are shot here this morning. Uh, but uh, I'm excited to get back into this series on the book of Acts. We're in Acts chapter three today. And uh, I'm just, uh, it's been fun. It's been a great opportunity for us to see how this idea of the story continuing. That's not just a cute little phrase. That is biblical truth that when we have gone through the first two chapters of the book of Acts, just to give you kind of some summary on where we've been, the first two chapters of the book of Acts kind of comes on the heels of Jesus being crucified, his resurrection from the dead, and then the birth of of the early church. He said that unless he goes away, that he would not be able to send his spirit to come and be with us. And in the first two chapters of the book of Acts, we see that his spirit did indeed come in the day of Pentecost. And this church that we now are all a part of was born. 
And at the end of Acts chapter 2, we, we see the pattern of how that God set up the early church to be a healthy, life-giving, transformational place for people to come in contact with this gospel, the good news. And so now, today, we're jumping back into Acts chapter three, and we're gonna see what God has in store for us. I, for one, have high expectations of what God is going to do. Today, we're gonna talk about this idea of expectations. I don't know what your expectations are in life or even maybe in the service this morning. We were kind of kidding around this week about this message and this idea of expectations. That's a really interesting topic to, to think through. We can have expectations on things that are really kind of small, and then we can have some big expectations of life in general. Let's look at some small ones, right? Expectations. Have you ever gone into a restaurant and some of you are, are like, uh, when you order a steak, how many, how many of you order your steak rare? Do you have any rare steak people? Like, all of two people, right? So yeah, so you order your steak rare and then the restaurant, the waitress comes and delivers it and it's well done. How many of you have had that disappointment, right? You understand your expectation was here, here was reality or here was reality and you have this frustration moment. You have this unmet expectation as parents. I have experienced this, not with our youngest daughter, Chloe, because she's perfect, right? Okay, and, uh, and But the other two, they're not here in the room, but uh, we had expectations where we would go to bed at night or whatever. We'd go to bed before they did, and we'd say, hey, there's dirty dishes in the sink. Um, can you get those you know, cleaned and put away by the time, you know, before you go to bed? And you wake up the next morning, and what happens? You walk out in the kitchen, there's still dirty dishes in the sink. As a parent, you have this expectation here, and your kids may or may not have met that, so to speak. Or let's bring it personal. When you, like at the beginning of the new year, you say, oh, I'm going to have these, these new habits. I'm going to exercise every day. I'm going to, I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to, I'm going to be no gluten, no GMO, no flavor, no taste or whatever, because, because they're the same thing, right? And you're going to think all of those things are going to equal weight loss. And you do that for like a huge, arduous journey of like three days. And you expect there to be this big, huge change and you jump on the scale and it didn't work. And you have your expectations are one thing and reality is the next. So I was thinking through this idea of expectations this past week and we were, we were dreaming about some ideas and, and some of you may have seen this movie. And when I think about expectations, there's a, there's a, a, a demonstration of unmet expectations that I can't get over any other more powerful thing was in the deep theological movie called Vacation, okay? So yeah, we're gonna go to Clark Griswold, if you know that character from the movie, but Clark Griswold was this man who had this expectations, had this expectation of like the most amazing family vacation ever, right? So loads everybody up in this va- in this station wagon, you know, with like the wood paneling on the sides. Who thought that was a good idea? Nobody, anyway. So they get them all loaded down, they go across the country in this adventure, and, and like different adventures, like peril after peril. In fact, one part along the journey, their aunt dies, right? But no, we're going to go forward. And what do we do? We strap the dead aunt on top of the car, right? And it's just like, oh my goodness, Pastor John, what are you talking about? Well, he had this expectation of this awesome, uh, this vacation to what? Their destination was the majestic theme park of Wally World, right? Yeah, you guys are crazy. You're like, I don't watch those kind of movies, and yet you all answered it, right? Okay, so we go, they had expectations of this, and we're going to get there, and they get there, and the, the parking lot's completely empty. But he is so determined and has such a high level of expectation. He says, Well, maybe we just got here first. Well, isn't this just awesome? We're going to have the best front row parking space ever. Drive up only to realize you understand where I'm going with this. And if you've seen the movie, you know that they get there and Wally World is closed for remodeling. And I'm not sure about you, but I can put myself in that place right then where I have this huge high level of expectation and for no fault of my own, except for possibly a lack of planning, right? And just, you know, figure that out. You get there and like this expectation is here and reality is here and we have frustration that sets in. 
You say, Pastor John, how does that have anything to do with the book of Acts? Well, the truth of it is, is that I believe, and I, let me just say it this way, I have experienced moments in my own life, in my relationship with Jesus, that my expectations and my experience has not lined up. And if you are anything like I am, which I have a feeling you are, when you come to that point where your expectations and your experiences, they collide, you're at a real crossroads in faith. You're at a moment where you say, I believe that this is a house of miracles. I believe in God's word. Come alive in the name of Jesus. And my expectations are here. And sometimes our experiences don't line up. So what are you going to do with that? It's a question I think we all need to ask ourselves at the end of our time today. I think we should be in a position or we, my prayer is that we would be in a position to make two very definitive statements. And I'm going to tell you kind of the end of the story before we get to it, but I want you to have this as an anchor to know we're going back to these statements, right? I believe God's heart and, and, our, and our purpose in this exercise, walking through this story in the book of Acts, is that we could get to a point where we would say with full con, uh, confidence and assurance that my desire to know Jesus is greater than my need for him to meet all of my expectations. That's a tough statement. My desire to know you, Jesus, is so much greater than the, than the need that I have for you to meet the expectations that I put on you. It's a level of maturity that God wants us to get to the, to the point of. And then the second one is this, is this in no way dumbs down our expectations of the almighty God, the creator of the universe. My goodness, anything other than that, because he's God and he can do whatever he wants to do in the timing that he wants to do it. He answers prayers to this day. God's word is true. God's word says in the prayer of faith will save the sick. We can have high expectations of the activity of the spirit in my life. Do you understand what I'm I'm saying that, that God says to us that, that we should have that expectation of his activity in our life. But even more than his activity, I want his presence. I just want to know him. And at the end of our time today, I hope that we can say these statements with a little bit more confidence than even now. Acts chapter 3 tells us this story of expectations versus experience. Peter and John, after this early church has been birthed, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. Man from birth, he was lame. He's an old, old, older man, he's an adult, and every day he had an expectation of just give me something, just begging, just give me a blessing, just give me something. There was this expectation. So then Peter and John comes along, and when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them, as he did every day, he asked them for some money. And Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us, which infers that he wasn't looking at them, right? Probably in a cowering position. Give me some silver, give me some gold, begging. Peter says, look at us. How many of you know that his expectation then at that moment probably went up a little bit and said, oh, I'm about, to, I'm about to score right here. This guy's gonna bless me. Looked at him intently and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money. Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you. Now, I don't know if there was a comma or if, if I was Peter and like wanting the dramatic pause, I probably would have put it right there, right? 
I don't have any silver and gold for you and just watch it, you know, just because I'm, I don't know. I, maybe I, that's just the sarcasm coming out in me. I don't see that in the scripture. But Peter said, I don't have any silver and gold for you, but what I do have, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. See, sometimes I think our experience and our expectation line up in such a way that we have these expectations and our experience is here. In this situation, his expectation was here. Just give me a, a little bit of money. And Peter said, no, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm gonna give you up here. I'm gonna have this experience with you. I'm gonna allow God to meet your need in a way that doesn't necessarily line up with your expectation. How many of you are glad when God does that, right? When God says, hey, you've asked for this, I'm gonna give you this. And God is still that same God who is doing that. And Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. And when they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. I love that last phrase because I know from experience, and maybe many of you have too, that when God does something great, you just want to stay close to the source of that healing. You want to stay close to that one that has brought you. And I'm just here to tell you that at the end of our time today, when we realize our expectations are God-given and there, there's some things that, that we need to, to depend on God for, at the end of that day, it's this this, this picture of this man holding closely and holding tightly to the, to, the, to, the, to the source of his healing that God says, if you'll ever get to that point and just hold close to me, I'm going to blow all of your expectations. You may have this level, but I want to give you this level. Expectations and experiences, sometimes they don't necessarily line up. For foundations, let's talk this way, is just a definition of this, this idea of our expectations. The very basic idea and thought of this is just a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. It's this dynamic that here's present reality. I have an expectation that things will be different over here. The difference between that is, the, is the, the level of our faith and when it relates to things of God, how are we going to depend on him and as it relates to our expectations? There's three things that as we go through this story that, that quite honestly, this, this week during um, just some time in the last couple of weeks in prayer and preparation for today, I was reading through this story and that, that phrase where it said he, he eagerly expected from, something from them. I was really challenged with that phrase there that God was saying to me personally, and I felt like he was saying that to us as a church. What are we eagerly expecting? What, it, what is the thing in our life? Maybe it's not just one. Maybe it's a list. Maybe there are things that we're expecting from the Lord. And as it relates to those, love, those expectations, those things of our, our desires, our hope, our prayer lists, our different things, there's a couple of questions that, that I believe that God may want us to walk through. And if you're taking notes, there's three questions today that uh, kind of serve as the outline for where we're heading. The first one is this, how do you manage the tension between expectations and gratitude? You say, Pastor John, what do you, what do you necessarily mean? Well, as a parent with kids, and maybe you've experienced this, or maybe you're in the situation where you are in this right now, where our kiddos would always have at Christmas time and different things, lists of things, oh, I want this, and I want that, and I need this, or need, you know, that kind of deal. And, and, and it was usually, and I, I understand everybody's in different situations necessarily here, but if you take all of us in this room compared to possibly the rest of the world, we're pretty blessed, right? And, and most people have the, the opportunity to, to have those things that, uh, the, that, yeah, you need you know, food and shelter and all that stuff, but we come to those moments of, of expectations and wanting more things, and as a parent, I had to help my kiddos 
really navigate the tension between having expectations and being grateful for what they already had. I think maybe God sometimes does that with us too. I think there's many times in our lives where we come to, to God and with our lists and, and our levels of expectation and, and is God able to meet? Yes, and yet sometimes God says, hey, I wanna take you through this journey of possibly what you would consider lack because I really want you to, number one, be grateful for what you have, but more than that, I really want you to know me. <laughs> I really just desire for you to know me. And so there's this tension between our expectations of God working and moving and being grateful for where we're at. Paul had this dynamic we see in his letter to Timothy when he writes about contentment. He says, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Now this is the same Paul who understood that that, that God could do miraculous things, right? That God struck him with blindness on this road when he was persecuting the church. And, and if there was anybody that understood a miraculous God, this was Paul. And yet he said, hey, I'm content with whatever I have, a lot or a little, I'm content. He also writes in his letter to the church in Philippi, he said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And then he gives us the recipe for this, this idea of managing this tension. He says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has already done. Wouldn't that be great if our kids approached us the same way as, as earthly parents? Hey, mom, dad, here's my list. But thank you for what you did last year at Christmas, right? That was just awesome. Boy, you talk about buttering up, right? That's, that would be great. And the, the truth of it is, is there's, there's some reality in that position of grateful, of being, having a grateful heart. Paul goes on and says this to, in Philippians, says, how I praise the Lord that you're concerned about me again, writing to the church. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. And then the statement we always latch onto and we claim this, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. What's this mean? This means as a result of this posture, out now I can do everything through Christ has given me. It's this attitude of being gracious and gratefulness that I believe positions us for our expectations to be blown away. How do you navigate the tension between your expectations and your gratitude? Some practical ways is just remind yourself, as Paul did, remind yourself of what God has, of what God has already done. Surround yourself with people that will remind you of that. If you're always around people that are just like, oh man, your life stinks. Wow, that was terrible. Oh my goodness, how can you even survive? Boy, that has an impact, right? Those are the people you don't wanna be around. But those that look at you and say, hey, you know what? I know you're going through a tough time, but you remember last year when God healed you? Remember last year when God provided for the kind of the same need there? He did it then, and guess what? He hasn't changed. We need those people in our lives, right? That's what, that's what the Bible says, that we're to bear one another's burdens. Those are opportunities for us to be both the recipients of and the distributors of God's grace. That's why when you hear us talk about different things at the church, like small groups and, and, and different opportunities, different than just this corporate worship experience, that's why those things are so important because sometimes we need to be encouraged that, wow, I'm really suffering through some times of some unmet expectations and we need those reminders of those things that we can be great, grateful for. For me personally, one of the best ways that, that I try to do is just by journaling, just write stuff down. And trust me, my journals, I've got a 
little section in the library in my house that are my, you know, past. It's almost like back in the day we had the, the, the diaries, right? You'd put a little lock on them. Well, it's, it's the grown-up diary, right? It's the, it's the journal of all the things that God has done in and through my life. Why is that important? Because when I walk through a time where I just am really struggling, God, I have an expectation of here, and yet my experience is right here. I'll go back and look through those journals and say, wow, he, he actually met that need here. And I go back and I look at it here and it's like, wow, he, he met that need there. And I hear my thoughts and I read my thoughts about I was doubting and I was, I was walking through a season that I was like, God, you're, you're really missing an opportunity here. And I was struggling. And then like five, six, seven, eight days, whatever, weeks later, I have the same thing that says, God, you met that need. And then I realized God's word is true and he's not changed. And so if I'm in the situation now where I'm having an expectation that's unmet, me managing that tension between that expectation and my gratitude is so important. Second question that I need to answer in myself is, what is, what is the goal? What's the result that you are hoping for? You say, John, this, uh, this, is, this is kind of a, you know, well, obviously, if I have an expectation for healing, the goal is that healing. If I have an expectation for provision, that I, I'm, I'm in need right now, my, I'm, the, the electricity bill's due and I don't have that, the, 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 this is a provision need, then, then that's the goal of that. And I understand that that is a goal of that expectation. But I wanna propose to you today something that I want you to consider in light of this scripture we just read through the book of Acts and some other supporting scriptures, that could it be that possibly when we look at those expectations, yes, God's noticeable intervention is a goal. Yes, God's provision is a goal. Yes, God's healing is a goal. But could it just be that God is allowing us to walk through some of those times of unmet expectation for a greater goal, and that is to know Know him more. You say, yeah, that sounds great. But that doesn't necessarily feel that awesome right now because I just need this. And so many times in my own life when I come up against an expectation like that that I need God to react and respond in a particular way, it's as if, and I don't do this consciously, but it's there. It's as if I'm putting myself in God's position and I say, God, I know what's best for me here. This is how you should respond. And we don't say it that way. I don't say it that way because we pray a prayer like this. God, whatever your will is, but, but I need this. Or God, if you so choose, but... And at the end of the day, I think it's wise for us as, as, as followers of Jesus, and even for some of you that may be in this room or online that, that you've yet to begin this relationship with Christ, I'm here to tell you today that, that so many times the, the most amazing, huge, miraculous intervention of God in our lives is for him to simply say, hey, I want to be your friend. I want to know you. Can you imagine that? The almighty God, the creator of the universe looks and says, hey, Tom, I want to be your friend. And he looks down at us and he just says, you know, hey, Terry, I want to be your friend. And we say, no, 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 I need you to meet my name. He says, no, 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 you're, not, you're missing it. I, I need you to be, be aware of this amazing, miraculous interaction that God says. And he says, I just want to, I want to be in fellowship with you as a, as a dad, as a mom in this room. You understand that. So many times we slip into the, that we just got to play this like cosmic Santa Claus, meet kids' needs and give them everything they want, Right. Please don't do that, parents. I think you, no, that's part of the problem. And so many times the kids are like, well, you're gonna keep giving me that stuff. I'm gonna, yeah, that's awesome. Keep, keep it coming like this. And before long, we just, we train ourselves to be this, this is how I need to respond to the people that love. And the whole time, there's something deep down within us, even as kids, when yes, it was cool when mom and dad would give us some stuff, but at the end of the day, in our inner being and who we are, what we really need needed is just that time and presence. And what we needed is someone to be present with me and just to show interest in me. And God does the same for us. 
But we gotta evaluate what's the goal of our expectation. I'm gonna, I wonder if in our own lives, which belief, which belief is stronger in your life? Two, two things I wanna throw at you just as a hypothetical. Is the belief that God can intervene, heal, supply, meet your expectation as strong as the belief in your life that says God is God no matter what and I'm okay with the mystery of his activity or inactivity? Which belief is more stronger? God is, is one that's gonna intervene or God is God no matter what? And I'm here to tell you both of those are found in scripture to be absolutely right. And so many times we get hung up on the God of the, the, the intervention. I need you to meet my expectation. And God's just saying, I, I, I can do that. But can we just spend some time together? I'm still God. You say, Pastor John, are you saying that God doesn't meet needs? No, absolutely not. I'm saying the greater goal of this journey of life can and should be about our presence with the Lord. The Bible says that, that Abraham believed God and it was counted him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Moses had the opportunity to meet God face to face and this, this intimacy of relationship was this goal of their lives. I, I said this to some people this, this past week, and, and I, I'm still wrestling with this because I'm not here yet, but this is where I want to be. In my relationship with Jesus, and I, I, I just throw this out to you as a, as a what if. What if we all got to the place in our relationship with Christ, if we were to be able to say with confidence, you know what, as I walk this journey with God, nothing will surprise me. It's not going to surprise me if I walk along this journey and I find someone that's sick and I say, hey, I don't have any silver and gold, but in the name of Jesus, get up and walk, and they get up and walk. That won't even surprise me. Or it won't surprise me if we walk along this journey and there's someone sick and, and God says, you know what, you just need to pray for them, and I'm not gonna heal them right. That won't surprise me either. And I just keep walking, and there's nothing that surprised me because God is still God, and I believe that he can, and he does intervene. But more than that, it's more important to me that we're just walking this journey out together, and we're just spending time with each other, and I have this intimacy and this relationship with God. All through scripture, we see the, the moments in time where God comes in contact with people. Their lives are changed. God does that. But the greater goal, the greater thing that God's trying to tell to each and every one of us is that relationship being restored. That was why he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. It was, it was to get that relationship with us back in, in alignment. There was this sin that separated us and he needed to fix that. That was the greater goal, the relationship with Jesus. You see, sometimes we get so far in our relationship with, with the Lord, and maybe we've, we've been in church all of our lives that, that we miss the simplicity of that, and we, we miss some things that God's wanting to do. How are you reconciling the goal of your expectations? Is it about God's intervention, like, God, you need to do this, or is it in the assurance that, God, you may or may not, but I'm confident in who you are? This past week, or two weeks ago, I believe it was, there was an opportunity that I, I saw, and many of you may have seen the story uh, going around social media, um, and it was kind of a big news thing or whatever. Um, There's a pastor out in California that uh, Bill Johnson is the pastor of Bethel Church out in Redding, California, and uh, we, they, the church is just incredible as it relates to different creative expressions of worship and some of the songs they've written, um, just really significant. In fact, we sing some of their stuff. It's just God's doing some great things there. Now, um, as soon as you say and mention any kind of church, everybody's like, oh, you endorse everything? No, I don't know everything to endorse. That's not what I'm saying here, but I am saying that God works in and through people's lives just as much as he does through us, he does through others. And I was hearing the story of, of Pastor Johnson this uh, last couple of weeks, and uh, they they'd been praying for his wife to be healed of cancer, and um, just a, a level of faith there that was pretty high. And a couple of weeks ago, she passed away. And how do you reconcile an expectation of God's healing, and yet the experience it kind of collides with that? His wife passed away, and three days later, he was in the, the service there preaching. 
died on Thursday and, and preached on Sunday, and he, he made a statement in this message that he preached, and I watched it, I was just like, oh my goodness, Lord, help me in the growth in my own life in that. Remember, three days after his wife dies, he says this, he said, the level of revelation that God gives you will always be equal to the level of mystery that you're willing to live with. God, I wanna know you more. Well, do you always have to know everything? Do you always have to know the reason why or can you just trust me? Because in that basis of trust, there's a level of intimacy that I long for. It says the inability to live with mystery is your resistance to childlikeness. Jesus said that we should come to him with childlike faith. I know sometimes we, we kid about our personalities that some people are like very analytical and they have to explain everything. But I think at the end of the day, we're all kind of like that. That we all wanna know the reason why. He goes on in that message and he said, you know what, I don't, after his wife passed away, he said, I don't have any right to critique God. He has every right to critique me. He talks about how God's been way too kind to me for me to now in this moment of my trial to somehow think that God is not God and belief that and, and shift my belief. No, God's been too kind to me. God, would it be that we would be a people that would say in the middle of an unknown situation that we would be comfortable with a level of mystery that says, God, you're still God, you're still on the throne. And I know that I have these expectations, but God, at the end of the day, the, the goal of my expectation is knowing you. I had a friend of mine that was coaching me through some, some situations, and he basically um, gave the pretty an encouraging statement that, that was this, that when someone does something that, that you don't necessarily understand the reason why, it's always good to ask yourself, do you know their character? Do you know their heart? How well do you know them? And if you know them well, and if you know their heart to be full of integrity, and you know them very well, you don't necessarily always need to understand the reason why. Well, I've found that to be the case in my relationship with God. If I know the character and the heartbeat of God such, at such a level, then I'm, I'm okay with the unknown and the mystery of how God does what he does. Our goal in every expectation is to know more the character and nature of God, no matter, no matter his response. That lame beggar, I need, I need some money. Peter, I don't have any silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you, an expectation and experience. You say, that's great, Pastor John. If my, my experience is always exceeding my expectation, then we don't have a problem, right? The truth of it is, is that's not how it always plays out. I, I always have these like what if and kind of questions in my mind as I read through scripture. And one of the stories that I, I love to, to land on in this area of expectation is when Mary and Martha came to Jesus. Many of you know the story. Mary and Martha, they were two sisters and they had a brother, Lazarus, who died. And they came to Jesus and they were like, Jesus, if you, you're too late. <laughs> you had an opportunity to heal and you missed it. I had an expectation of here and my experience was here and they don't line up. And the story goes like this, that Jesus came and he hung out in their house and Mary and Martha had two different responses to the presence of Jesus. But in the middle of that, that close relationship with him, what did he do? He said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, their brother who was dead, rose up from the dead and was alive. That's amazing, right? Like God stepped into this picture and he did through his son this amazing miracle of resurrection. That was incredible. That was an, an expectation met. Wow. Can I tell you the rest of the story? That's not even in scripture, but we know because of the reality of the Bible says that it's pointed to men wants to die, right? Here's the deal. Lazarus died again. You ever thought about that? Here's this amazing, heal, this, this amazing work of Jesus raising someone from the dead. 
that then died again. So what was the goal of their expectation? He, you know, or was it a lesson for Jesus to say, hey, I can do that. But I can also come and sit and hang out with you in your house and just be present with you. And if you'll ever get to the point where the, the resurrection of the dead, that's no surprise because that's just what he does. Then the goal of your expectation becomes something different. It just becomes knowing Jesus more and trusting him more. These last couple of years when we walked through um, COVID and it's an incredibly um, transformational moment in our history. And I, so many times I'm, I get tired of even talking about it. It's like now there's things happening still or whatever. But the truth of it is there's transformational. And yet in that middle, we, we had these conversations the last couple of years in, at the church we were at that if you ever noticed, like when, maybe you noticed it here and we all did it, so this isn't pointing fingers, this is we all did it, that our prayer life for people to be healed, like God-fearing, Jesus-following believers in Jesus that got sick, our prayer life for them to be healed so that they could stay here on earth healthy may have really surpassed our prayer life for people that are dying and going to hell without the knowledge of Jesus has ever been. So, wow, Pastor John, that's really convicting. And wait, 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 you don't know us. I just know from the experience, we walked through this where our focus was the goal of our expectation of God trying to meet could have been so, so small. God, can God heal? Yes. God just wants to be our friend too. And through our healing, through those, those workings of God showing up and having those met expectations in our life, the, the greater goal is that we would know him more. The almighty God, the creator of the universe would just have a relationship with us to where when he acts, no surprise. When he doesn't act, I still believe you, God. It's still good. I'm still content. Our former, we, an Assemblies of God church here, Calvary and some of you may be new. We are, are just, we're proud of the tribe that we belong to in the Assemblies of God. And our former general superintendent, kind of the top of the flow chart in the Assemblies of God, George Wood, he's since passed away. He's in heaven. But before he died, he was preaching at uh, the church we used to be at. And, and he said it this way as it relates to this prayer dynamic for healing versus salvation. People says, what if Christians prayed as much for lost people to go to heaven as much as they prayed to keep saved people from going to heaven. In other words, we prayed a lot for people that were saved and knew Jesus that if they died, they're gonna be in heaven. We prayed, God, don't let that be the case. Heal them, let them stay here. Was it the same level of our prayers for people that don't know Jesus? You know what I'm saying? It's just this expectation. What's the goal? What's the goal of your expectation? What's the goal of that met prayer? What's the goal of... Is it just to know him more? Church, can I challenge you with something? Can we all get to the point possibly where we would say, I wanna know Jesus so much. I wanna know him so, so deeply and, and so intimately that, that I'm, I'm content, as Paul would say. God, if you wanna meet that need, great, and it'll bring glory to you. But God, if you want me to walk through this and, 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 and just trudge through this really difficult time, you are still God. I trust you. You are still the Lord of my life, and nothing changes about that. I'm not surprised about that either. There's a level of contentment in that place. I was reading a book this past week. Um, it's called Living at the Next Level. I don't have it on the screen, but it's uh, authors. Uh, his name's Bishop Courtney McBath. He's a pastor in Virginia, and he says this. Ex expectancy is a place of trust, and trust is the basis of friendship. Our problem sometimes is that we give up on God too easily. To protect our hearts from frustration and difficult times, we often lower our expectations of God. We don't want to suffer any more disappointment, and we fear that if we dare to hope for a change, we're just setting ourselves up for hurt. So what do we do? We shut down our hope. We shut down our dreams, and we shut down our expectations. We tell ourselves not to believe that God can be God. If we stop believing God, but if we stop believing God, then what can be said 
of the health of our friendship with him. The truth of it is, church, that in the middle of this tension of expectations and gratitude and what's the goal of your expectation, that we do still play a part in this living out, fulfilling expectations in people's lives. What part do you play? Acts chapter three, it tells us a good example of this. We're gonna skip that. Acts chapter three says this, Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold, but I'll give you what I have. And he reaches down to the man, helps him in his healing, meet those expectations. Can I tell you that even in this moment today, that God is still in the business of using people just like you and me that are still wrestling with the tension of expectation and gratitude and and what's the goal of my expectation? God, do I really need you to do this so that I'll follow you? Or am I just content to say, God, you're God, and I'm not surprised when you meet that need. I'm not surprised when you don't because you're God, and I don't understand it all, but I trust you. I place my trust in you. And in the middle of those kind of those issues that we as followers of Jesus walk through every day, God still has a part for us to play. It is not a matter where we lower our expectations. It's that we shift the goal of our expectation. As followers of Jesus, we say, I want to know him more. I want to become more deeply connected with the heart of God so that when I walk along this journey, not even surprised when he does the healing, not even surprised when he doesn't because God, you and I, silver and gold I don't have, but I'll give you what I do have. And it may just be that step of faith, of faith that God's wanting you to step out into. You say, Pastor John, you seem like that, that you're saying the expectations and experience don't always meet. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But in the middle of it, God's still God. And he's trying to get us to the point where we would say, hey, I trust you. I'm content. I don't need to be God in this situation. I have a level of knowledge with you, God, that you really do work together for the good. All things to those that love him. And so maybe, maybe you choose to heal right now, but maybe you don't. I'm still going to walk with you. I'm still going to be your, your reflection of your grace to people around around you. I have a level of communion and contentment and relationship with you that it's, it's no surprise when you heal. It's no surprise when you don't. Jesus said it this way when he was talking to the disciples before he left this earth. He said in John's gospel, chapter 14, I love it. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. Lazarus, come forth. This was the level of relationship that Jesus was saying was it's available to us to say greater things. Then he goes on, he says, and even greater works. Why? Because I'm going to the, be with the Father. And we heard from earlier teaching to know that Jesus was, was going away so that he could send the Spirit with us. Remember the statements at the beginning? I expect to have the activity of the Spirit in my life. It's not about dumbing down your level of expectation. It's about shifting your expectation to say, God, let's walk together. And in the middle of our walking together, if there's a lame person at the gate, then I'm gonna give him what I have. And that may just be in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And you would be surprised that when you connect your faith to this reality of God's presence in your life, then yes, maybe you do have to reach down and pick him up and play your part. But Jesus said even greater works because I'm going to be at the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I'll do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. That doesn't seem like dumbing down the expectations. That seems like there's a level of relationship that we can have with the son of the living God that he would say, hey, can we just walk together and you know me and we're gonna do greater things than you could ever imagine. That's a level of expectation that I can get on board with. That's a level of anticipation that I believe that God wants to have for each and every one of us, even when our experience doesn't line up with that, even when, well, we've had some 
some things that God didn't answer or whatever, does that change the fact that God is God? No, it just changes our understanding of why he did or did not do that. I've heard, you've heard me tell the story as a dad holding that infant son. You've done that as your kids and, and holding those children as they get immunizations. It would be crazy for us to try to explain to that child why we are letting that person in the white coat stick a needle in them and hurt them. They cannot understand that. I know as the dad, it's good for them and it's going to help them stay healthy. In the same way, it would be crazy for God to, to even attempt to explain to us all of the things that he lets us walk through. But I still trust him. I still believe he's still on the throne. I still believe his word is true. Greater things than these, I'm going to walk in contentment in that expectation. So where does that leave us? It leaves us back at the position where we say, my desire to know Jesus, it's greater. It's greater than my need for him to meet all of my expectations. Does he? Yes, because he's a good father. But that's not the goal. My goal is to know him and to know the fullness of him. And I do have expectations of the activity of the spirit in my life. He said that would be the case. I read the scripture, greater things than these will you do. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come with me. Would you stand with me all over this place? As we conclude our time today, remember the three questions. How do you manage the tension between your expectations and gratitude? What's the goal of your expectation? And what part, what part may be God asking you to play this week? Maybe today, to meet someone's expectation and, and be that hand like Peter was to reach out to that lame man. In just a minute, we're gonna have the prayer team to come forward and we're gonna believe for God to heal. We're gonna believe for God to meet us in our, our position of need. I believe that even when our experiences don't line up with our expectations, there is an opportunity right there for us to say, okay, God, it's in this moment I am not gonna turn away from you, but now it's in this moment where the roots of my relationship with you, they're about to go really deep because I still trust you. And God, I don't understand why you haven't met this expectation or this need or whatever, but God, you're still God and I'm not. And I place you in that authority. I allow you to take your lordship over my life. And there's a level of intimacy in that posture that gets us to the point where Peter said, it's no surprise that, okay, get up and walk. That's the level of expectancy that I want to have to say, God, I, I just trust you. Many of you are joining online or in this room today and you said, well, that first statement, my desire to know Jesus, that I'm stopped right there because I don't even know him. In just a minute, we're gonna pray together. If you're here today, the greatest miracle that, that I could offer to you is to introduce you to the, the creator of the universe, God, that says he wants to, to be your friend. You can be called a friend of God. We do that through accepting that Jesus paid the price for our sins. Without forgiveness of our sins, we can't be in relationship with him. There's a, there's a separation there and Jesus paid that price. In a moment, we're gonna pray together with you and that's the greatest, the greatest miracle in your life. And can I also just tell you that, that when we walk through scriptures like this, there are, I promise you, um, in this room, there are probably multiple things that in those thought bubbles and in our spirit above our heads, we, we more than likely, because we all are human, have those things where we say, you know what, here's an expectation in my life, a, a relationship, an, an opportunity, God, for provision, an opportunity, God, for healing, that we have an expectation, we have a desire there that for whatever reason, God may have not yet intervened. And I understand that. I have some of those in my own life. 
in the greater journey that God's trying to push us into as we even have this story continuing in and through us. Family, I just say it this way, is for us individually to recognize that God's trying to get us to a level of communion and relationship with him, that it doesn't surprise us when he meets and does the miraculous. It also doesn't surprise us when he chooses to walk us through it. That's a level of contentment that I, that, I, that I long for, that I think God desires all of us to have as well. I'm gonna ask the prayer workers to come forward and just join me around the front. And as they do, I just want you to, to ask the Lord, God, is there an area of, of my life and an expectation maybe that I have a need that, that uh, today's the day, today's the day that you meet that. And I, I don't know what that is for you, but I know that lame man in Acts chapter three, every day he went to that gate. Every day he had an expectation of this. And for some reason, this day was different and God chose to meet his need. I don't know why, but I know that God intervened right then. What would have happened if that was the day he decided to not go? What would have happened if that, those, those circumstances, I don't know. But I knew that day God had something different for him. And so in a moment when we are dismissed and, and ask for you to come pray, I'm just, I, I don't know what the need is, but we just wanna join our faith with yours and pray together with you. And I believe that today could be the day for healing. I believe that because God's word is true. It really is less contingent upon on my level of mustering up the courage. It's all about God saying, you know what, God, your word is true. And your Bible says the prayer of faith will save the sick. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails, it produces much. I believe that word is true. I believe God can do that. Some of you maybe online, you're, you're joining with us and you say, yeah, I've got a need for healing. Here's the, the awesomeness of that is God's no respecter of place. If you just respond on that, that, uh, that platform there, we've got prayer pa uh, pastors there that will pray with you together too. And I'm just expecting for healing, even in our online community as well. If you're here today with us and you wanna join your faith with ours and pray, or you just wanna meet Jesus for the first time, now's the chance. How cool would it be for you to, to meet Jesus today and get baptized next week? We wanna, do, we wanna walk that out with you. Let me pray with you one more time and then we'll be concluded. Father, I love you and I thank you so much. God, I pray that as we prepare our hearts to receive and join together with each other, God, meet needs in this place. Meet needs all over this room, online as well. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and keep you in your coming and going. And may you be a reflection of God's grace to everybody you come in contact with all over this community. And may you wrestle with strongly those expectations and gratitude and expect the activity of the Spirit in your life. Amen, amen. Come, let us, let us pray together. And as those are coming, feel free to be dismissed. God bless you. Have a great week. We would love to join our faith with yours and pray together with you this morning. Amen, God bless you.